Good afternoon, good afternoon. I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. I apologize for not having any sound when we first came in. But we are here, you guys. We're talking about Edit Your Credit today. This is like another part, a rendition of Edit Your Credit. We're going to be finished talking about risk and also talking about your credit reports on today. But I do want to let you know that the landing page is now available for you to pre-order your books. Uh, you can go to myffu.com forward slash edit hyphen your hyphen credit. Again, that's myffu.com forward slash edit hyphen your hyphen credit, edit your credit. Uh, you can get your books there. Now, I also hope that you went out and expressed uh, your constitutional right to vote. I really do let you that really do hope that you let your voices be heard on today. Um, I really don't care what party party you voted for. The fact that uh, you voted will make a world of difference. Um, just gotta we just have to start exercising our right to vote, you guys. And after we do that, we need to galvanize as. as uh, a unit and begin to speak uh, to the politicians as to what you really uh, stand for and find the platforms that you really agree with and uh, and vote. So I pray that you guys were able to do that and express that on today. Um, polls are closed, I believe, unless you're like on West Coast. Uh, but I believe the polls are closed pretty much across the country except the West Coast. And you'll be starting to see those votes come in. Uh, probably will wait till tomorrow morning to figure out what's going on with that all right you guys let's go ahead and get started guys my name is george howard i'm the author of editor credit we're going to be going over that book on today uh the original version of editor credit was published in 2002 2002 it is a hundred or well, it was a 192 page workbook that was written in 2002 uh content that you won't believe we're going to be talking about credit now for probably at least at least another week i uh, will be talking about credit uh, as we go over that, I want to see if we can bring up Facebook because I always cheat and always bring up Periscope on my phone. Uh, but I want to see now if we can actually bring up Facebook so that uh, we can have some uh, great dialogue there as well. Um, again, you guys, uh, let's see here. How do I bring up Facebook? I don't. Guys, that's the problem. I'm like, really, when it comes to Facebook, I really don't know. Um how to do it, but we will be trying to express that on today. So uh, if you guys don't mind, go ahead and invite some people to come on in. We will be sharing real hard content. We will be going over some, um, uh, I guess you can call that sample credit report uh, as we did uh, previously before. So go ahead and share that out on today. If you don't mind, click the three little buttons in the corner. I got to sneeze. I hate when you have to sneeze, but it won't come out. Um, I really, really hate that. But um, yeah, I got to sneeze, but it, it, I guess it'll come out when you try not to sneeze, right? <laughs> That's the way it always happens. So, um, thank you so much. Uh, Brenda is in here, Lee. Thank you so much for inviting your followers, uh, and for sharing, uh, those of you on Facebook, I can see Facebook. Now let's see the comments. Can I see comments? How does this thing work? I'm trying. I promise. I'm trying. I always leave Facebook out and, um, I'm trying to see, I actually got kind of excited. I don't want to write a comment. I want to I want to see the comments. I don't know how to work this. Anyway, guys, here's the original book, Editor Credits, 192 pages uh, with forms, templates, you name it. Guys, I can tell you now, it was too big, too intimidating to do uh, it again. So we broke it down into three different formats. Um, here is Editor Credit as you guys can see it now today. Um, this is what Editor Credit will look like here. This is what Editor Credit will look like now, volumes one, two, and three. Uh, it is Insider Secrets, uh, Insider Secrets to Fighting and Winning, Insider Secrets to Everyday Living, and Insider Secrets to Excellent Credit uh, are the, is the name of the three books. Again, that's Insider Secrets to Volume 1 is Insider Secrets to Excellent Credit, Volume 2 is Insider Secrets to Fighting and Winning, and then Volume 3 is Insider Secrets to Everyday Living. Uh, you will be able to get those on Amazon, but you can get them right now, uh, pre-order, sale, uh, right now at www.myffu.com forward slash edit hyphen your credit hyphen your hyphen credit um, You will be able to you can should be able to see that at the bottom of your screen now And so um, get you want to take care get, You want to take care. You want to make sure you pre-order that we have our special pre-order um, Thing each book is was regular 1997 I think you can get them now for $15 each or you can get the bundle all three with the course um, if I'm not mistaken for like $94, like get the course, the course is regular $87. 
Uh, each book is regular $19. You can get all four, the course and um, all the course and all three books for $94, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, $94. So you guys want to do that as well. Do I just click on my name? How do I do this? I'm trying, you guys. I promise I am. What's going on, Roberto? I see that house, man. We need to talk about it. I, I am interested. I promise I am. Oops. All right, so let's turn it down. So, um, yeah, I think I'm now in Facebook, I hope. So let's get some content out, you guys, uh, as we already go, guys. Before, when we were actually here on last Friday, on Friday, we talked about, um, we were talking about the credit report, we were talking about risk, and we were talking about how the, uh, the credit bureaus, which are Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax, um, they are responsible for collecting data and information from creditors and then composing that get that data onto what's called a credit report. That credit report is, a, is, is, is designed to do one thing and that is assess risk. That is it. That, that is it. Lenders pay them a lot of money just to be able to uh, help them determine who they should and should not lend to based on risk. And the more riskier you are, you may be denied or you may receive higher interest rates because the more the risk, the higher the rate. And so you have lenders who specialize in uh, what's called subprime lending. Um, and subprime lending is not limited to the mortgage industry. It's limited to any lending that people practice in that's considered subpar. So you have financing agents that are just strictly subprime. You have hard money lenders that are strictly subprime. You have credit cards that are deliberately, that are deliberately to subprime, right? They have different cards for different things. And so all of these uh, different entities are to do one thing and that is to assess risk. That is the only thing. Thank you so much. Uh, is that see it? Uh, it's so small. I can't see it. Thank you, Yoshi, for inviting your followers. I think it's knee play. Thank you so much for inviting your followers. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, so let's assess risk. And so as they collect your data, the problem is that they collect data about you and they tell you to other people. The problem is that you have no influence in it. And so uh, over 20% of credit reports we know have errors on them. That is a remarkable statistic. That is a fun, remarkable statistic that 20% and actually we found other data that says 70% of our credit reports uh, contain contain errors in them. But uh, 20 minutes did do a special uh, and that special they said it was 20% and but we did find some from the Fair, Fair Consumer Rights uh, Protection something. Uh, it's not the act. It's not the act. But it's another um, website we went to they said 70 percent of all credit career bureaus have errors in them i even go over farther even in the, i wrote a whole chapter in the book of why i feel like a hundred percent of all credit reports are not accurate and said again 100 percent of all credit reports are not accurate now i know it's a like an amazing statement to say but we're going to actually talk about that even as we broadcast uh going on in the future so even as we go and broadcast in the future we're going to be talking about how credit reports your credit report is not accurate. I don't care who it is. I believe 100% of credit reports are not accurate, but I believe it's the way the system is designed. It's designed for them not to be accurate, and it's a setup um, for us. Um, no, D. Charles. So D. Charles said, I'm on the website. It won't let you add all three books at one time. There is a package, and so let me walk you guys through that, and then we'll go ahead and get started with content. Um <clears throat> Where is my website? Here it is. All right. So, guys, I'm going to go to www.myffu.com forward slash edit your credit, and it's going to come up. And, guys, what you want to do is go here, and I will make the change since I know that somebody already had a problem with it. And that was one of the things we were scared of is that if you want to do the bundle, you want to click here, pre order today, right? What? Well, there's no button. No, pre order today. And that pre-order button will come up and it is $94, but because we are shipping three books, it's a little heavier, it's $6.99 for shipping and handling. Um, but that is $94 right here. You can order all three along with the course. Uh, you will get a login uh, once that happens. Uh, this is live, so I can't, like, it's not in test. I can do test mode. It's not in test mode. So if I put it through, it'll go through. I mean, it'll actually charge my card. So um, again, you want to go here to hit pre-order today. Or you can go scroll down here if you want to order a book individually. There's one here. Um, there's another way you can order individually. Or you can go here where it says order all three books and a course. And you can click there and it should take you to the same site where you can actually order the bundle. 
Uh, Angela St. Rose, hello, how huh? good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. All right, you guys, so that's it. Let's talk about some content. Let's actually do some things. Uh, it's going to talk, help you get your credit together. So let's get ready to rumble, as they would say. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about uh, sharing. I'm excited about sharing. Somebody already, the package is said just for the course and books. I already bought the course. We already bought the books. You know what? That's a great point. We'll put together a bundle just for the books for people who already got the course. I don't have a bundle for that. Y'all making me work, y'all. Uh, I tell you what, what we'll do, we'll put together a bundle. It could be a sale. So we just make it a sale because you're already knocking off, we already knocked off some money off the books. Let me think about it. I don't want to make a rash statement. Um, so let me think about it, but I will go ahead and do that. Is that uh, Forever Life? That's who? Oh, yeah, yeah, they duplicate. Yeah, okay. Okay, D. Charles, I see you. Uh, I will. I'll go ahead and get that done for just the books. It's probably going to be something like $40, something like that. $40 come out to be less than $15 a book. So you're really getting a great deal uh, with that as well. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, let's start talking about this content, you guys. Before we left off on the credit report, I want to pick right back up right there at that particular credit report and uh, where we left off at. And we're going to continue from there. Um, huh? Yeah, your moderator. <laughs> Helen's over here celebrating because she got rid of a troll, y'all. Yeah, I met her. I met her and Brittany are moderators. I think Irena's one. I think I got some other uh, moderators as well. All right. So inquiries made in the last ninety days, you guys. You will find on your credit report. There's a section on here for inquiries and inquiries on well inquiries. Um, what is it about? Edit your credit is about how to uh, get your credit together. Honestly, whether you got good credit or you have bad credit and or um, you know, average credit, we actually teach you how to, uh, first of all, we teach you in book number one, um, what the credit industries are about, what they, uh, how they operate, because you can't really know how to operate within something unless you know how they operate, right? And then number two, we teach you how to fight them. And then three, number three, we teach you about everyday life. So um, I guess I should talk about that, but let me go ahead and give you some content and then uh, let's, then I'll break it down, I guess, like halfway through. Uh, Cause I do want to get, get you guys content. We got to get through this credit report, but I promise you, um, Marquita, I will go ahead and get that, but I do want to get people that's tuning in content and good content uh, on how to actually get, uh, Facebook people are here. Constance. I see you girl. I see you. All right. So guys, inquiries. Now I want you guys to write this down. There are two different types of inquiries. There are hard inquiries and there are soft inquiries. All right. Hard inquiries and soft inquiries. Now, what are the difference between a hard inquiry and a soft inquiry? A hard inquiry is anytime you fill out an application and you're applying for a loan, they will pull your credit report and it will show as a hard inquiry because you have applied for credit. Uh, but there are also people who will see your credit report that, <clears throat> excuse me, that, uh, that are soft inquiries. And so when you get like the pre-approved offers in the mail, those are soft inquiries. They may not have seen all of your credit. They could have seen your credit score, um, something they some some information they bought from the credit bureaus. Um, those are soft inquiries, and they will send you information based on soft inquiries. Now, hard inquiries will work against you. Soft inquiries won't. But inquiries are while they matter, they're not significant. And I want to say it again: while inquiries matter, they're not significant because they're the least of the five factors that make up your credit report. They're the le least, rather, they're the least of the five factors that that make up your credit report. Thank you so much, Brenda, for inviting your followers. Thank you so much, Bishi, for joining in. What's going on, Catholic? Thank you guys for joining in. So out of the inquiries, they are the least, but you want to make sure that you guys in every single area, and we're gonna, I want to actually talk about that in just a second, every single area, right? So then there's another section of your credit report that speaks of public records. Now, public records is anything that can be found publicly. Typically, things that go through the court system, that's public record. If you have filed a bankruptcy, it is public record. If you have a tax lien, it is public record. If you have been sued and you got a judgment against you, it is public record. Anything uh, that has really gone through the court system becomes public record. And you want to make sure uh, if you owe child support, that is public record and it will show up on your credit bureau. And that is something that will damage your credit. I promise you. Uh, it will damage your credit. And so you want to make sure you're paying attention to that as well. 
Again, you guys, we're going to be showing you and teaching you and telling you how to even get rid of bankruptcies and foreclosures off your credit. I'm going to show you that live. And also we teach it in the book. Of course, uh, we teach it in the book or books uh, with that. All right. So let's continue. So, guys, if we continue to go on, and guys, if you missed the first, uh, really the first page, there was a lot of information we gave on last week about this. And um, you really, really want to go back and pull up those old Periscopes or old Facebooks or old YouTubes because um, they are there and you really want to watch that. All right. Now, guys, here you guys begin to see that there is AKA information. You don't want AKA information. You don't like AKA information. Uh, it shows that um, you have less stability than someone else. Dead serious. I know it's like, what? It really is true. And we talked about that on last, on Friday. Uh, we talked about that. And so uh, I do want to help you guys uh, with that. And that's just to go back and get that information. I want to continue to move forward as we talk about that. Again, guys, we talked about the employment information. You guys can see here that it has on here the, you know, Steve sample uh, and Sharon sample. Um, one works for Berlin Tires, the other one works for Acne Finance. And it has the occupation, and it also has who they're reporting to. TransUnion actually came up with that information with Berlin Tire. And actually, let me see if I can show you guys here. So Berlin Tire, you see the occupation unknown. So like, it doesn't say what he does for Berlin Tire, but they know he works there. They know he's worked there um, since June or May of 2006. And it reports to TransUnion. This is the applicant. 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 <laughs> Did I not saying it right? Applicant applicants yeah that's that dude right and so then over here we have the co-applicant that's what the cap stands for cap and app co-applicant applicant this one is reporting to experian xpn uh they've worked as a vice president with acne finance uh was in testville california by the way you guys this is a fake credit report uh and that they've been there since june of 2011 june of 2011 now, this is what I really, really wanted to get to you guys on today. And that's kind of why I was like, okay, let's keep moving. Because this is important. This, These codes right here, applicant, and it gives these codes here, 39, 13, 34, and 18. These mean a lot. And you really want to actually know what those are. It tells you why your score is what it is. And it, if you know that, then you know where you really want to improve your score. But again, you won't see these codes on your regular credit report that you get from annualcreditreport.com, that you get from Credit Karma, that you get from freecreditreport.com, and all the other websites that issue credit reports. They typically don't have this information on there, right? This is information that, and we talked about this on last Friday as well. So I'm telling you, if you guys missed that, that, that you want to actually see it. You want to go back and do it. You guys can see that his credit is suffering. He has a 536 uh, um FICO score. This is the 536 FICO score. And it's telling you that he has serious delinquencies, right? So 39, code 39, which we see here. And as we come here, serious delinquencies is what they say. One of the reasons why his score is suffering at a 536. But then watch this, you guys. He also has delinquencies that are recent. Remember, we told you on last on last week that the older the delinquency is, the less effect it will have on your credit report. Well, they're saying not only does he have a serious delinquency, remember we looked at the 30, 60, and 90 days late, and we talked about the rolling 30s on last week. Well, here they're saying that he has serious delinquencies, and they're also too recent. <laughs> That's important. And then we also say on 34, it says the amount owed on delinquent's account. So not only were the delinquency, not only does he have delinquencies, not only does he have recent delinquencies, but the balance on the delinquencies are pretty high. And they're judging that all of that is going into the algorithm or the large formula that makes a difference in um, his credit score. And then finally, code number 18 says the number of accounts with delinquency. So let's go back and let's redo this again. So not only does he have serious delinquencies, but they're recent, the balances are high, and then he has more than one. And so they're saying because of these four factors, you this is why he has a 536 credit score. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, and really until you get up to like the 780s, 800s, you're going to have four codes. Is it when you get over like an 800, you're... You might only have two, but mostly everybody that is watching this, uh, mostly, I say everybody, uh, will probably have all four codes. And they're telling you what you, this guy's, it's like getting the answer key to a test before you take the test. 
It's like, hey, you want your credit score to go up? Get rid of your serious delinquency. Get rid of the uh, delinquencies that are too recent. Get rid of the balances and get rid of all of the ones that are like a lot of them. He said, well, George, how do I do that? That's what we're going to be talking about. But before we do this, this is what book one comes in because in book one, we tell you what the credit reports do, what information you need to obtain from them, um, how the credit industries operate, how you can manipulate the credit bureaus based on the information they give you. And then you can use that when you negotiate with creditors or when you dispute information and all those type of things. You can use every last one of these things to dispute or as you collect the data, because you can dispute stuff, you guys, and do it incorrectly. It can come back as a frivolous dispute. You can do what I call cement that onto your credit report. Cementing on your credit report is when you talk too much and you admit to stuff that you shouldn't admit to, right? So here's an, here's an example. It's like, you like, I'll say, let's say, um, let's call the girl Aisha, right? So Aisha, um, has a collection on her account, right? And so she writes the credit bureaus and she said, you know, I was going through uh, a really hard time in life. I just moved and while I moved, um, you know, we had some sickness in the family and then I lost my job and it was really a tough time for me. But you know, I, what, what you just did and during that time period, I fell behind, but I'm now caught up. And I really, what you just did is you just told me you were late. Like, they don't care why you were late. Their job is to assess risk. And they don't care why you were late. All they care about, what's going on, Tyree? Good to see you, babe. Uh, they don't care why you were late. All they care is that you were late. But if you admit to being late on anything while you make a dispute, if you give them in a sob story any information that they need, and also we're going to be talking about collection agencies. And when they call you, what you need to say, how you need to say it, when you need to say it, and to make sure that you don't admit to stuff, y'all. We just... We, it's like, even with credit reports, we're like the first 48. Y'all ever see when they give the cigarette and then they go to commercial break and then they come back and that cigarette is half gone and he didn't told the whole, well, you see, okay, yeah, man, we really was there, right? But, you know, it wasn't supposed to go down like that. They about to tell everything. Well, some, most of the time when we start talking to collections bureaus, debt collectors, uh, collection agencies, when we start talking to them, we talk too much. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Deal with them correctly and listen to me. Shut up. The, the, the burden of proof is on them. But when you get to talking and rambling and talking and rambling, oh, you know what? I was going to pay that. You know what? I wasn't late that many times. I was only late one. No, you was never late. Like... <laughs> No, shut up. You're talking too much, right? So that's where that's going to come in at, right? So uh, when you get ready to dispute and how you get to dispute, all that kind of stuff, all of this information is, 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 is God, it's, 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 it's the most important. I was looking for another word more than important. I couldn't come up with it. <laughs> but it's emphatic. You must, it's emphatic. This information is emphatic. You must have it in order to actually know how to dispute this. Like there's a little bit of research and stuff that goes on uh, along with that as well. We got Elite and Brenda in here, Tyrese in here, Elite as well. And so, um, <laughs> so that's it, right? So guys, watch this. Now, this is your right. This statement right here where it says consumer statement. Um, read this, I just want y'all to see this, right? Y'all see, this is like one of them Trump lies. You know, when Trump tell a lie and, and then he want to tell why he told the lie, right? This is one of Trump lies. Like, this account went to delinquent status while I was out of the country, right? They don't care. You were still like, whether it was only, now watch this, and this is in book number three, the only way that does not make a difference if you're military. And that actually pertains to like rent and things like that. Like if you're deployed, you can't be evicted while you're deployed. That just can't. That's there. There are laws in place for the military that protects them. And we actually cover that in book number three. Like book number three, we're going to talk about what each one of the books talk about in just a second. All right. Um, but what she did, she just cemented this stuff on her. Now, this is how y'all know I'm not using the right version of uh, Adobe. Don't tell nobody. All right. So this account went to delinquent status while I was out of the country. You just told him yourself. You just. So when that account is never going to come off your credit report because you just admit it. You know, they, when they say you have the right to remain silent, shut up. You have the right to remain silent. You do not have to tell imperative. Thank you, Ms. Proverbs. Um, you do not have to tell yourself. 
So while you have a right to make a consumer statement, I never, ever, 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 ever recommend you making a consumer statement because there's no benefit in it. No credit creditor is going to read that and be like, oh, okay, we're going to make an exception. We understand. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. That's not, um, you say, I need to know how to start using the trade lines. Tyree, your credit is perfect and flawless. I don't want to hear that stuff, y'all. If y'all want to, y'all want to meet somebody who has great, excellent credit, uh, Miss Tyree over here has, um, she showed, she actually showed her credit in one of the, uh, scopes that she did or live she did. If I'm not mistaken, I think she got like 820 credit scores. Like the girl is bad. Like, right. All right. So anyway, um, then we get down here, you guys. Um, you see decode director information. This is actually who actually pulled the credit report and things to that extent. And then we get fraud verification. That's to say that you're clear. There's never no, it did not hit a fraud queue. And then again, this is a fake company called Credco, or Cred, uh, CoreLogic Credco, who is a fake credit reporting agency. And we talked about that on Friday, how even people who pull your credit are not pulling them from TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. They're actually going through a third-party agency through that. And it's it's and we talked about it last week. I can't keep going with it. All right. So um, let's back up right quick. Let's rewind. And as you guys see there, it's in the report, right? And we kind of went over this last time. And this is actually in the book, you guys. I took this credit report and I actually put it in our book. Um, but you guys can see where there's a code. And we talked about all of these different codes on last week but there is something i don't know if it's in here though it is okay so this is going to be good and we're probably not going to get off this today we're probably not right but i want to show you guys something this right here this is something that you probably will never ever 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 see on your credit reports that you get that is imperative to you knowing what they are and how to use them and um yeah what they are and how to use them and that's this rate universal rating code over here right so let's let me show you what what they were on the credit report, and then we're gonna come back. I'm gonna look at those, and then we're gonna talk about why they're significant. Okay, so let's go back and let's go up. I'm gonna go up, page up, page up, page up. Right. So I'm gonna go up to page one. Now you guys see here where well, this is a mortgage, Bank of America, and it tells you it is a mortgage, and I know it's a mortgage because I see this M right here. This M means it's a mortgage. This right here is a second mortgage, and I know that as a loan officer, I would know because number one. This balance is larger than this one. Now, I have seen some second mortgages are larger than the first, but it's very rare. I probably maybe seen it maybe once or twice in my whole career in the mortgage industry. And I was in that for over 10 years, owned two mortgage companies. Uh, and I've done it all my life. And I've probably only seen it maybe once, maybe twice in my whole career, right? Typically, your first mortgage is always going to be the larger one. And even if the first mortgage has to subordinate to the second, they're usually going to do that. And subordinate just simply means that I, I choose to go into second tier position and allow them to be in the first tier position uh, based on that. And typically they don't want to do that either, right? All right, so, but this is it, right? So you see this M, M and R. Let me see if I got an I down here anyway, and an I, right? So the M stands for mortgage, right? So it's letting you know, or letting the uh, person who is reviewing your credit knowing that you have a mortgage. The R stands for revolving account. A revolving account is something that goes up and down. And as your payments go up and down, I'm sorry, as your balances go up and down, so does your payments. So a home equity line of credit could be a revolving account. A credit card is definitely a revolving account. A department store card is definitely a revolving account. A gas card is a revolving account. These are revolving accounts with something that you can continue to borrow from, borrow from, borrow from, and then pay it off and borrow from again. Those are revolving accounts, right? Then you have this right here that is an installment account. An installment account is now a, a fixed loan. So you're going to be financed over a period of five years or 60 months. It's going to be a payment of $200. $62 a month, and that's what it's going to be until you make your last payment, which may be a little bit less than that. That is what's considered to be a uh, installment account. They're, they're, they're locked in. They're installed, right? So you have these different. Now you have uh, even codes now, even today, because of Vantage score and FICO score, and we're going to talk about credit scoring uh, later on this week. Um, now that they come in, now you have also, you got an A for auto. That didn't used to exist back in my day. Um when I was still in the industry, you have an A for auto, and you also have an S for student loans. So it kind of differentiates now between a mortgage, an auto loan, a student loan, an installment account, and a revolving account. They break that down even more. But 
that's just the beginning because there's a number next to it. If you guys look here, and I think last time I was highlighting, wasn't I? Yeah, if you look here, you guys see a two there, you see a one here, you see a one here, right? Let's see if I can find some other ones. Let's see here. Well, I didn't want to do that. All right. Let's see if I can turn that off. Where's my hand? All right. So let's see if we can find some other ones. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. So great. Here is a nine. So we're going to actually highlight this, right? This is a nine and you know it because it's a collection, right? So those numbers are so significant. I mean, when I say significant, they don't get any more significant than significant. They're so significant, right? Let me tell you why. Let's go back down here. When you guys go down here and guys, this is on. Now, this is going to. Well, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. This code right here is like. It's, remember I talked about the answer key? This would be like. Not the answer key. This would be like uh, the study guide to the test. This is the study guide. Like you get the study guide. Y'all ever had a professor to give you the study guide to the test? And if you just memorize the study guide, you're going to do well on the test. That's what these codes are. These codes are, oh, you, they are, they are in, <laughs> imperative, right? They're imperative to knowing how to fix your credit, right? So if you see zero, that means, well, you just got the account. We really can't grade it because it's too new. Now, we're going to stop there. Two new accounts typically, and this is no longer because FICO, well, it's still long. I can't wait till we talk about credit scoring because it's so confusing that we got to talk about it because I'm trying to talk about it now, but you're really not going to understand because it's kind of confusing, right? <laughs> All right. So when I say that, that's to say this, is that now, presently, um, account needs to be three to six months before it gets a grade, right? That's um, using FICO or Vantage Score. But Vantage Score came out with something called FICO 3, well, they found a way to score over, I think it was like 4 million more people. It might have been 40. I don't know. It's either, I'm missing the zero. Or I'm adding a zero. I don't know. But they were able to score so many more millions of people because they started scoring new accounts. So people who couldn't get a score under Vantage Score, and I know you're like, what's a Vantage Score? Right? We'll talk about it. I just can't give it to you all at once. This is why there are three books. Right? Because you have to break this stuff down into content because it's so much. And they do this on purpose. They really do it on purpose, right? Like, if they really wanted you to know credit reporting, why would they not give you more information? Google it. Like, you get the same information no matter where you go. You have to get the insider secrets. You got to find people that's been in the industry. You got to find people who know what this stuff is, right? So a zero is a too new to rate, which means that I just got the account. Um, they really haven't seen a pattern here. And since they haven't seen a pattern, uh... Um, since they don't have a pattern, they really can't grade it yet, right? Well, there is a new scoring model now that will do that. And then, of course, when Vantage Score came out with it, FICO had to bite off of it. And they're now going back and forth with the battle, right? Which is now why you have the now Ultra FICO, which we'll talk about when we talk about credit scoring. It's not a credit scoring scope, all right? Now, here, guys, you have a one through nine. This is so important, one through nine. Remember, we just seen a one, we just seen a two, and we seen a nine. Remember when we went up there and we seen the two and it said 30 days late? Oh, 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 oh. Right here, the number two, it says 30 days. Oh, 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 oh. I got to try to. Uh, 30 days late or 30 days delinquent, right? Uh, stop it. Stop it. All right. So I finally got it to work, right? All right. So let me go up here and I want to show you the two. And then I'm going to show you, right? So let's go up. I think it was an M2. I think it was the first one. Right, M2. So you guys go up here, you see M2, right? When you guys go over here, you get to see that. And again, we went over this on how to read this on the last live that we did. But I want to show you again. Uh, if you guys go over here, you see past due right here. And it says 30, 60, and 90. Those are 30 days late, 60 days late, 90 days late. All right? When you get down here and you actually see the account, it actually says it right here. He's been 90, he's been 30 days late nine times. He's been 60 days late one time, right? What is the code for late? Well, let me show you. It says it right here. So the last time we reported, see last delinquency? Uh, stop it. Last delinquency. You see that? Was in June of 2013. Well, they're now about to go back in time and show me his history over the last 24 months. Again, you don't see this on the credit reports you guys get. 
You don't see this information. But your lenders, they see all of this. Especially any mortgage broker. This is what I learned how to read credit off of. This is I learned this back in... God, I went to Purdue in 94. So this would be 94 or maybe 95. I started working with PNC Bank. All right. 94, 95. No, because I had my own place then. 95, 96, somewhere in there. Anyway, so um, what you guys see here, you see a two here. That means he was 60 days late. Stop it. This means he was 60 days late in June of 2013. He was also 60 days late in May of 2013 because each one of these numbers represent a month. So let's go back. Watch this. This would be June. This would be May. This would be April. This would be March. This would be February. This would be January. So this is like to the end of the year. You see that right there? You got two. That's one month. It was 60 days late. That's a two, one month, 60 days late. He paid on time these four months. So this would be... Um, June, this would be May. This one right here would be April. This one right here would be March. This one right here would be February. This one right here would be January. So if I went forward here, but I can go backwards and tell you when and how he was late. But he's been 60 days late twice with this two right here, and you see this M2, right? So let's go back down. So now his account has been rated an R, oh, I'm sorry, not an R2, an M2 because it's a mortgage. And a mortgage carries the most weight than anything else on your credit. Whenever you're late on your mortgage, it's going to have a higher effect than it would if you were late on a credit card or late on a car note. A car note is also significant. And I'm not telling you what to be late on, but I am telling you that your mortgage has the most weight behind it. It has a lot more weight than a, uh, a gas card, right? It's going to hit your credit a whole lot harder so when you get down here and i'm not here when you get it down here you guys get to see the universal code 2 30 days late or 360 days late right he's been late he has an r2 rating which says 30 days late which is really still not right it should be an m2 rating an m3 rating because he's been 60 days late and again this is a sample credit report uh it really because i've seen some other errors that didn't kind of correspond with what i know right and guys you get to see here also mop codes and it's the method of payment, the status of universal rating code. So when you find things like an R9 rating, that means it was a collection or a charge off, right? So this R9 rating would be like a revolving account that is a collection or a charge off. Or you could see an I9 rating. Or you might see something like an R8. That is a foreclosure or repossession. Each trade line that Tari was just talking about has a rating, has a code. Every trade line. And it's also, it's just, all, all of this is in my book, Editor Credit, you guys, in 2002. Like, this is all in there from 2002. This has a rating. And so when you get scored, they score. They don't really go back and look at, well, they do. But the easy way to score is that they actually score the, uh, they score the trade line. And if you have all, if you have all R1 accounts, then that means you got pretty good credit, right? But if you got a couple R R1s, a couple M2s, a couple I3s, well, you got some damaged credit. And that's really what they're looking at. So if I was to negotiate with a creditor, and this I've done this several times, several times, and I don't offer a service anymore, you guys. I I, I just I, I just I just don't. I just don't. And I can go into reasons why I won't. In the future and why i don't in the future we'll talk about it while we're talking about the book but we don't offer any credit reporting or credit repair services but i teach you in the course how to do every single thing you need to do everything is all laid out in the course it's all laid out in the books like whatever you need is here do it yourself and don't pay nobody a thousand dollars to fix your credit that's we i ain't gonna say retarded because some people say, oh, you pay somebody to fix your car. You shouldn't have fixed your car. But there are people out here that specialize in things like this. But me and myself, I try to learn stuff, do stuff myself. That's just how I do. Right? So if I'm talking to a collector, right? And let's say I'm talking to Discover Card. And I tell Discover Card, hey, listen right here. Hey, listen, check it out. Uh, this account is still pretty new. You know, I, I see that I was late. You guys put me in a charge off collection status. I haven't gone to collections yet. I have a whole different department that I'm dealing with inside of Discover. It's the delinquency department right before charge off. So that job will try to collect for me before they sell it. All right. Well, since it's new, and guys, we're going to talk about this more when we talk about um, when we talk about uh, negotiating with creditors. We're going to really break this thing down. But I'm giving an example right now. But I may say something like, you know, um, I do see that I was late on my credit report and or I do see that I was late. Uh, but what I would like to do is that I will pay you X amount of dollars 
But in return, I want this to report as an R1 rating. What did you just do? See, think about it. I was reported before, let's say, as an R3 rating, right? Which means that I've been 60 days late on this credit card a few times. Remember these codes that we just talked about? Remember these codes right here that we just talked about where it said, da -da 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 -da, right here, where it gives you the serious delinquency and all that kind of stuff? We're, we're going to negotiate that off because now if it's no longer R3 or R9 or R4 or something like that, if I can negotiate that off and turn it into an R1, I just made something that was bad credit, good credit because our R1 says I've never been late. Look at this. R1 is surviving account. R1 says that I've never been late right here, right? Uh, uh, a one means current R1 rating. I want this to report as an R1 rating. Now, again, we're going to talk about this when we get into the negotiating factors. Um, but I want you to understand that uh, you got to get all this stuff in writing, right? Anything you negotiate, get it in writing because they'll probably tell you anything to get your money and be like, sucker. Right? Well, you're not a sucker because you've been educated through Financial Freedom University. You're going to get this. You're going to get this, <laughs> this credit right today, right? So I can literally negotiate a bad credit to good credit, like a bad trade line, make it a good trade line, right? Like you can really do that. Now, why would the creditor do that? And how would the creditor do that? Well, let me show you. Let me tell you. And we talk about this really in the book this time. I didn't share much of this in the book uh, last time. Um, but I go into a lot about this into the book this time. And we talk about how the credit reporting system is voluntary. All right. Guys, I gotta, I, you guys got to understand that the credit re reporting system, number one, is not government. They are not government. These are private companies like TransUnion is out of Chicago, right? Like these are companies that are based across the world globally um, and they're private companies. Like the, they're, it's like me opening a credit bureau and you start getting data and I say, I'm gonna sell this data, make me a credit report and people start using me, right? It would take a long time to develop that reputation. But same thing as a private company, private, private companies, private. They are for-profit organizations. They're not non-profit. They're for-profit organizations, which means they only here to make money. That's all they care about is making money. Do, 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 right? Every year, you need to see the scale go like this, and it's working for them. Now, here's the catch to it. Because they are a for-profit company, they can't force people to, re to, to report to them. Like, government entities can form laws and stuff like that to say you must report. A private consumer cannot. I can't make people pay me to do business with me. I wish I could because then everybody would have to pay me, right? I can convince people that I that they should use me and these are why, this is why, but I can't make anybody say, you're going to use George Howard, you're going to use editor credit. I can't make that. So it's strictly voluntary. So your creditors own your information. Discover owns your information. Uh, let's see. Visa, MasterCard, Discover, Macy's, JCPenney, Sears, your auto loan, your mortgage companies, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, City, Far City Finance, Finance, whoever it is, they own your information. The credit reporting agencies do not own it. They report it to the credit agencies voluntarily, which means if they choose to change something, they can. Now, they'll tell you they can't. They lie. They can't. I've done it too many times. I've gotten stuff deleted from the credit reports. I got stuff changed in the credit reports. I got bad credit changed into good credit on credit reports. They lying. You can't do it. Do you guys know how many loans I was able to close as a loan officer because I took time to actually help people dispute stuff? This is how I actually edit credit was born. Because I was a loan officer. I need to close loans. Black folk had bad credit, especially in the church. Now, y'all going to be offended, but it's true. They needed this. I helped them get their credit together. What did I get in return? I got loans closed. I made money. Did very well. Boom, right? So, <laughs> say not to say this, that they're for-profit agencies. So, since they're for-profit agencies, it's voluntarily, they own your information. They can change it or do whatever they want to do with it. So, they can say, oh, you know what? We made a mistake. This is really what it is. This is what it should have been. Blah, yada, yada, because it's strictly voluntary, which works in your favor especially when you know this like if you don't know this they say oh we can't do it you say oh really okay no they can't and this is how are we and we're going to talk about this when we talk about negotiating with creditors so i'm going to really change the subject but i'm going to get this this tad bit right here when they say oh i'm sorry ma'am i can't do that 
You know what you say? Oh, okay, that's fine. Can you put me on the phone with somebody who can? Because they're not lying. They can't. They're a somebody who's in a cubicle who answers the phone who does not have the authority to say we're going to change your credit report. But that manager sitting in that cubicle or that manager sitting in that in office down there, they can. I need to talk to that person because you can't do what I need to do. And if you want this money, I'm going to need something in return. If not, then, you know, I'm really considering bankruptcy. That's the threat, right? We're going to talk about all this in negotiation because that, that's like a creditor's worst fear. Like, no, don't say the B word. Like, bankruptcy. Like, no, bankruptcy. No, <laughs> right? So like, they hate it because bankruptcy says they ain't going to get nothing. So you kind of throw it out there like, bankruptcy. <laughs> right? They they hate uh, they hate that word. They, they just hate it. So you can kind of use that as leverage, right? We're going to talk about all that kind of stuff when we get there. But, okay, so R1, you can turn a bad credit account into a new credit account. So what are we doing? Guys, right now we're talking to you. My name is George Howard, for those who are just coming in. If you have not shared this scope out, share this out because I'm giving away a lot of inside secrets to help you get your credit together. And then we're going to open this up for Q&A at the end, right? But here it is right here, right? Guys, this is the book, Edit Your Credit, or Books. Right here, we have three editions. Uh, edition number one, or volume number one, is Edit Your Credit. Uh, it is insider insider secrets to excellent credit insider secrets to edit to excellent credit uh, That this particular book is teaching you how the credit industry works You cannot win in a game when you don't know the rules to the game It's teaching you how it works like all the stuff I just went over your credit report and there's so many other things that we talk about inside of there Like so many you know what can I do that? Can I can I show in the book? Can, can I show in the book? Edit your credit all right, it's, all right, we're not going to do it, but I, I really want to. But I, I talk too much, and I get in trouble all the time. Thank you, Coach, for inviting your followers. Um, so, Energy Credit Volume 1 is teaching all this stuff, all this information. is teaching you the rules of the game, how to work within the system, how it's all about risk. going to teach you about credit scoring, and we're going to be here tomorrow talking about credit scoring. You don't want to miss the score, because we're probably going to talk about that to the end of the week, because it's so much information when it comes to credit scores, because it's so much, right? So we talk about all that in volume number one, right? So actually, when you get your foundation, now I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to fight, and I'm ready to win. That's what volume number two comes in, Insider Secrets to Fighting and Winning. What is Insider Secrets to Fighting and Winning? It's teaching you how to fight and how to win with the credit reporting agencies. We have sample templates in there that I recommend you using, but alter them. And we're going to tell you why you should alter them in the teachings coming up. Alter them. Um, and we're thinking about, we haven't done it yet. If Aisha can find a way to help me figure out a way that you guys can... Um, you know, download that, and it's only going to be to those who have purchased the book, not people who are like sharing a link. Then we'll actually make it available for those who purchased the book, right? But like, if I put a code in the book and you give somebody the code, then it's the same thing. So if Aisha can help me figure that out, then we'll actually make that content available for you as well. Um, the name of the book is Edit Your Credit. It's on the screen. Edit Your Credit. Uh, volume number one is Insider Secrets to Excellent Credit. Volume number two is Insider Secrets to Fighting and Winning. And uh, we go over, when we talk about fighting and winning, you guys, you know what? I'm going to think I am going to bring it up. Let's go here. Edit your, all right, and we're going to go to volume number one, right? So I want to show you the table of, con oh, wait, I don't want this Photoshop. That's going to bring up the book. Um, all right, let's bring up Word. That's volume number three. I want volume number one so this is the whole book in its entirety and then we broke it down into three different books and so um i'm going to go back and we're going to go to again get rid of that and we're going to go to open i'm just going to do the table of contents you guys um right here inside of books guys it will release on black friday so you guys don't want to miss it but you guys can pre-order and get a better deal right now than what we're going to give on black friday all right so a book in the making, a wonderful word of credit. We're going to teach you in book number one how the credit reporting system works. Can we really trust the credit reporting agencies? And the question, the answer is no. You can't. You can't. And I'm going to show a, a I'm going to show an a video that's on my website right now from 60 Minutes that tells you and show you why you cannot trust the credit reporting agencies. They're not your friend. They're a for-profit agency, and the only people they care about are their customers. And you're not a customer. That's the sad part. 
They get paid from lenders who pull credit reports. You don't pay them. Other people do. So they don't care about you. They care about profit. And you're not a profit. You're a product. So shut up, product. Get on this shelf and let me sell you. That's how they feel. Right? So can you really trust them? No, you can't. Credit reporting agencies are for-profit companies. We talk about that. A voluntary system. I told you that. What is a credit report? And then we go through the details of a credit report. Guys, there are so many different types of credit reports. There's a mortgage report. There's an employment report. We talk about uh, an insurance report. Uh, Harold just found out about our insurance report the other day. It was kind of funny. She was like, you know, uh, my daughter uh, is off in college and I call to uh, add her to the credit reporting system. Huh? Because you know you talk so soft. Harold, oh, I'm sorry. Let me let me talk like Harold y'all. You know, I called the credit reporting agencies and, um, um, you know, they said, y'all, <laughs> she about to throw something at me. Y'all know she whispered when she talked, right? So anyway, she, uh, she called to add her daughter to the insurance and found out that her daughter is considered high risk. Uh, her daughter is under 25, which is high risk. Her daughter uh, probably has no credit, which is high risk. She has credit? No credit? She has no credit, which makes her high risk. And then the girl that had two accidents, which makes her high risk, right? You under, under She's under 25, two accidents, and have no credit history. They pull your credit reports, believe it or not, to discover insurance rates. So she's like, they uh, they, they made some other agencies. They like credit bureau reports. Like, it's in the book, Carolyn. Really? Like, yeah, it's in the book, right? So... They, yeah, we talk about that. Other credit reports, right? Who may check your credit report? How it's all about risk? Uh, how to lend? Who they lend to? Risk based lending that is so important with risk based lending. What you got to say? Oh, and she got, oh, yeah, she has an error on her insurance credit report because watch this. Her daughter had two accidents, right? Well, they got it as Helen having one, her daughter having one, and it's not true. Helen was like, I ain't had an accident since when? In 20 years. She ain't had an accident in 20 years, but. On her insurance report, she has an error, which is making her insurance how much higher? I don't know. It's just high. How much did they tell you? The difference is like a hundred, hundred fifty dollars higher a month. Yeah, it's about a hundred dollars. About a hundred dollars extra month, twelve hundred dollars a year, because she has an error on her credit report. Like this is real talk, right? <laughs> all right so all right what else we got? We go like this is just book number one, you guys. Then we go over here. We talk about application scoring, like. Did you know that when you fill out an application, you get a, a score for that? Not a credit score. It's an application score. It's not even done by TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. It's done by the lender themselves. Then there's behavior scoring, bankruptcy scoring, attrition scoring, profitability scoring, collection scores. All of this stuff has scores on it. And guys, all of this stuff is in book number one. And we just kind of made it more up to date in book number two. Right? Um, can I have a charger? I got 5% left on my phone for Periscope. Right? Uh, I'm going to tell you how to order in just one second, right? Then you got nine ways to increase your credit score fast. You want that right there. A list of reasons, right? We just talked about a list of reasons. And then we talked about significance of a late payment, impact on impact of inquiries, influence of a low balance, more credit grades available. Guys, go over here. We talked about why I was denied, types of credit, installment and revolving accounts, what lenders look for, why you may be denied, co-signing, when is it worthwhile? I can tell you now, never. <laughs> How do you read these things? Like all the stuff we just did with the credit report, we take you through it step by step. Uh, the big three, deciphering a credit report. We talk about the three C's of credit, character, uh, capacity, collateral. Warning, all credit reports have errors. That is me. I'm telling you about that. We talk about the automated machine and when um, when profits precede people. That is a real chapter in the book because they are for-profit company. They don't care about you. I don't know what my charger is. Um, and then... What do we stop at? Uh, stop pretending these are real investigations. We talk about that, right? That's book number one. Let's go to book number two. Open book number two, volume number two, fighting and winning, right? We're just going to go through kind of like the table of contents, right? All right. Table of contents, introduction, a book in the making, fighting back. Credit reporting agencies are for profit companies. We talk about that. We had to reiterate it because it's like the beginning of a book. You had to reiterate it, but fighting when you know your rights. So the first thing is like, have your right, fighting with your rights, right? Then we talk about fighting and winning with collectors. Then we talked about the 16 facts creditors wish you didn't know. Guys, you talk too much. Stop talking. I'm going to teach you how not to get in trouble when you talk to these people. Like, they're going to hate that I told you this stuff. They're going to hate it, right? But you're going to love it. You're going to be like, George, you saved me so much money. Like, did you know that debt had an expiration date? 
there's a such thing that debt has an expiration date. Every state has an expiration date on when they can collect from debt. And I have literally just helped some of my contractors who had to go to court on debt. It's like, bruh, when did you say that debt was? Bruh, it's past the statutory limit in Indiana. It's in here, right? So anyway, then we talk about uh, the 12 lies most people believe about credit, right? We talk about that stuff, like the type 12 lies. Like I'm trying to click off. I don't know how to, it won't let me do it. Stop. Well, I want to let me click off of here. Okay, there it is. All right. Um, the fixer upper. Now, this is how I teach credit, guys. I teach it like a house, like an old rehab house. Because most people say, you know what, George, I want to go out here and I want to buy these credit lines. Why? Like, okay, I got to bring my picture up for this, right? I got to bring my picture up for this because this is important. It really is. Because the new thing today is to buy credit lines. Guys, stop. Like, okay, before it was authorized users, right? I'm going to be authorized users. I'm going to get my credit up with authorized users and blah, yada, 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 yada. What's going on, Melanie? Good to see you. Authorized users will help that much. They will help that much. Uh, buying trade lines will help that much. Let me tell you and show you why. Because you still got R9s ratings on your credit report. You still got R8s and R6s and R5s. They're still there. They're still new. You still got several of them. They're still delinquent. And just because you put good credit on top of all this mess, the way I explain it is like going into a rehab building and that you got holes in the wall, a hole in the roof. The floors are crappy. You got the drywall is hanging off the, off the edges. The windows are all busted out. You say, you know what? I'm going to go in here. I'm going to hang this picture on the wall. I'm going to put these drapes up. And you know, even though this hole in the wall, I'm going to paint this nice burger bread oh no i'm gonna go with a burnt orange and i'm gonna put this carpet down you're decorating a house that is full of errors and full of 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 just just ruin like it's 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 no stop putting good trade lines on bad credit clean up the bad stuff first and then we'll build on top of it and i tell you how to clean up the bad stuff Get that bad stuff off your credit. I'm going to show you how i don't care if it's a bankruptcy i don't care if it's a foreclosure it can come off i tell you how I show you how. Again, this is insider secrets. This is what people do not want you to know. All right. Um, this, your family said no to authorized users. All right. So, right. Don't don't do it. Just don't. And then, guys, if you guys to do a CPN, you're going to jail. Stop it right now. Like I don't like uh, uh, CPNs just make me want to pull my hair out. Like CPN, like it's illegal. And I know they say, oh, no, it's not illegal. This is what the stars do. This is what, man, you understand that this is legal, man. You can do this. No, it's not. It's illegal. Stop it. That's somebody else's social security number. They're probably dead, but it still was their social security number that you just stole and put it on your, and they sold it to you as a CPN. But guess what? If you get caught with it, you're going to jail. That is called identity theft. You're going to jail. Stop. Don't do it. All right? All right. So, um... So what was I talking about? Oh, I was talking about uh, like fixer uppers, right? So it's like a fixer upper. You gotta clean up the bad stuff first. And then once we fix the windows and the floors and the walls, and once we fix the roof and you get the plumbing and everything working, then we can hang blinds and, and, and put you know new carpet in. And then we can put you know our pictures on the wall and, and paint the house and make it look good. Guys, y'all are trying to fix up a hot mess. Your credit report has been shot for the last seven years, and now you want to start putting new trade lines on it. No, it ain't going to work. You got stuff still in collections, and you're still trying to add trade lines to your credit report. No, stop. See, they don't want to teach you the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you, God. You know what they want? They want to make a sale. And we fall for it every time. Like, we always suckers. Why we always fall for the sucker stuff? Like, the sucker deal. Stop. Stop. I know you want your credit right. Can't edit your credit. I'm going to teach you how to fix it right. F fix it and then rebuild on top of it. The correct way. The longevity way. And now you got information you can tell your friends, your family. Hell, if you want to start fixing credit, you could. Pass it on to your children and teach them how to do it. The right way. Said to I'm going to buy some trade lines. I'm telling you. All right. Let's go back. They're killing you. I'll teach you how to do that too, right? All right, so let me go back, you guys, to um, the book, right? This is still book number two. Uh, 12 lines most people believe about credit, the fixer upper. Uh, ironclad credit report strategy will produce positive results. Five things you should always do when forming your credit, when forming your strategy with collections. Uh, fighting back through disputing. We teach you how to dispute, a quick summary of disputing, nine steps to a successful dispute, help, how do I rid myself of 90 and 60 days late, uh, automatic injustice. Automatic injustice, you guys, is when you dispute online. I don't care who told you, when they told you, how they told you. Do not ever, 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 
ever, ever, ever, ever, ever dispute online. I'm going to say it again one more time. I hope you get it. You ready? Do not ever, 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 ever dispute online. Don't ever do it because you are giving away your rights literally and there's no investigation being done. It really isn't. And I explained that it is an automatic system called E-Oscar. It, it really is horrible. Don't do it. We talk about it in the book, right? Uh, then we go through, watch this, fighting back and winning with bankruptcies, fighting back and winning with foreclosures. We teach you how to get this stuff off of here, y'all. Then we give you sample dispute letters. And I say sample dispute letters, we give you several of them. Matter of fact, I would like to show them to you. Then we talk about verification versus validation. Like there's a difference when a computer, when a credit reporting agency says we verified your account. Yeah, but did you validate it? Right. And so I don't want to go to the credit bureaus to validate my account. I want to go back to the original creditor and say, hey, validate my account. What does that mean? That means prove that I actually owe you this money. Prove that I actually signed this contract. Prove that this payment is actually correct. Prove how you came up with this balance. Because who knows if you calculated the interest correctly. They must, according to the Fair Debt Collection Practicing Act, they must get this right, this information right. They must get it right. And if they can't prove it, it got to come off your credit. So then I go from the validation from the creditor and I go back to the credit reporting system and say, hey, y'all got this on my credit report. It ain't right. They can't prove it. Take it off. And if you don't, then you just reviolated the Fair Credit Reporting Rights Act. Guys, you literally are representing yourself, not in court, but you're literally like opening your way, like doing pretrial for uh, a legal, for a legal dispute. And if they don't follow you and don't do what you're asking them to do, you have the right to take them and sue them. And people want at the highest right now, one person got one point eight million dollars. What? They can tell my credit up. Some, You know what? Some of the, <laughs> I hate to say this, but some of y'all got bad credit for free. 1.8 million they settled with somebody for 1.8 million dollars because they gave them bad credit by mistake and wouldn't fix it and you got bad credit for free no <laughs> no all right all right fighting back with the audit negotiations you do not want to miss that one let me go over here you guys uh accuracy and proof uh, consider the type of account, recent payment history, debt collections that have expiration dates. We just talked about that. Statute limitation in state and number of years. The five action steps to negotiating with creditors. Fighting back through by building credit, right? Remember we just talked about getting it off? Now we're going to tell you how to get it on. How to develop a credit history with no credit. How to research pre-approved offers. What's in a BBB report? Uh, how to receive measured credit cards regardless of your credit history. Secure cards, secure loans, credit builder loans. Like that's a new thing right now. Do, should you do it? A credit builder loan. Um, then we talk about fighting back when in the credit crisis, like all of these 20 little known secrets that have been hard on how to obtain an 800 score, five reasons why closing an account will kill your score. Like it just goes on and on and on, guys. And this is book number two. We ain't even got the book number three yet. Do you see how much content, how much information this is for $15? Are you serious? Guys, that's a, that's, that's, that's a Big Mac and a Happy Meal. Like I really want y'all to think about this. $15 is a Big Mac and a Happy Meal. If you get all three books right now for $45, like, that's literally, like, a day out to eat. Now, y'all credit been towed up for how long? How many times you just spent $45 on something? You'd be like, man, you know what? I could have got my credit together. This is real talk. Pre-order today. Pre-order today. MyFFU.com forward slash uh, edit hyphen your hyphen credit. Right? This is book number two. And I'm going I'm to show you guys how to actually get your credit right. So, let's go over here. And it's www. And you guys, it's in the lower third down there, too myffu.com forward slash edit hyphen your hyphen credit enter boom right so it's inside the secret to a credit score pre-order right right now and uh, i'm going to play this video in just a second you guys do not want to miss this video this video is the bomb right i'm going to play it in just a second Right, 40 million Americans have errors in their credit report. 60 minutes in the investigation. You are probably one of them, <laughs> right? But guys, you can go down here. You guys, you can actually order, pre-order any of the books here, or you can just go ahead and buy the bundle. The bundle does come with my course. My course by itself is $87. The course by itself is $87. And then on top of that, you get the three books, you guys, all of it for $94. You don't want to pass this deal up. This is the pre-order sale. Um, you will get this and it will absolutely change your life if you apply it. Now, I'm going to tell you, buying the books and watching the course ain't going to do nothing for you if you don't apply it. You got to put some actions with your faith. Faith that works is dead. Let's get this stuff right, right? If you don't do that, then it ain't going to work for you. You got to get all of it right. All right. Um, 
you got to buy all three books individually, and I'll make a bundle tonight. Uh, is it uh, Ms. Nett? Uh, we'll make a pro order tonight because I know it comes with the course. Um, you got 15, 15, and 15, 15, 15, and 15 is $45, but I will make a bundle just for the three books without the course. It'll be available on tomorrow. I didn't think about that, uh, and I should have. Um, well, you can buy all three individually, or you can bundle them together for $45, all right? So that's that. All right, so let's go back into, you know what? I think this, I'm going to watch this video, you guys, and I want you guys to see here, right? So I want you guys to watch this video. It's three minutes, and it ain't going to take long. Boom, right? I want you guys to watch this. It's going to mess your world up. It's crazy. Like, credit bills are crazy. They are crazy, crazy. All right, here you guys go. Watch this. Whether we like it or not, we live in an age where much of what goes on in our daily lives is monitored, collected, and sold to interested parties. Our driving records, our medical history, our internet traffic, and most importantly, our credit information. A mistake on your credit report can cost you money. It can increase the interest you pay on your loans, prevent you from getting a mortgage or buying a car, landing a job, or getting a security clearance. It's not uncommon. A new government study to be released tomorrow indicates as many as 40 million Americans have a mistake on their credit report. 20 million have significant mistakes. And our own investigation of the credit reporting industry shows that those mistakes can be nearly impossible to get removed from your record. The story will continue in a moment. Consumer credit reporting is a $4 billion a year industry dominated by three large companies, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. They keep files on 200 million Americans in traffic in our financial reputations. They make their money gathering information from people we do business with and selling it to banks, merchants, insurance companies, and employers and they use it to make judgments about our creditworthiness and reliability. But now the reliability of the industry is being questioned in an eight-year Federal Trade Commission study to be released tomorrow. John Leibowitz is the chairman. Here's what we found. Some pretty troubling information. One out of five Americans has an error on their credit report. And one out of ten has an error on their credit report that might lower their credit score. I'm trying to think of another industry where a 20% a error rate would be acceptable. That's a pretty high error rate. It's a pretty high error rate. I think the more we look at this, and the more the American people know about this, the madder they're going to get. Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine has opened his own investigation into the credit reporting industry, which for years has blamed mistakes on banks and merchants that provide them with bad information. But DeWine argues the fault lies with the industry for what he says are clear violations of the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Do these companies have a legal responsibility to make sure that the information is accurate? The, the federal law says that if you believe that there is a mistake, you can go to them and they have an obligation to do a reasonable investigation. They're not doing a reasonable investigation. They're not doing an investigation at all. Every day, DeWine's office fields calls from desperate constituents who can't get the credit reporting agencies to answer their questions or correct mistakes on their report, like paid bills listed as delinquent, closed accounts listed as open, in bad debts that belong to other people with similar names or social security numbers. The, the problem is not that they make mistakes, it's they won't fix the mistakes. It literally is like this, you know, guy behind the curtain in the Wizard of Oz. You really don't know what he's doing. It, it really is a secret operation. It really is a secret operation. Guys, if you don't have the insider secrets on how to fix your credit, you're going to be lost in this secret operation. That is so true. You need the insider secrets to, um, <clears throat> insider secrets to, um, all three of them, honestly, <laughs> I was going to say, you really need one. You need excellent credit. You need fighting and winning and you need to life, right? I'm going to go over the last book with you guys and then we're going to get up out of here. You ready? Uh, let's see if I can pull it up right quick for you. Let's see here, guys. That's been up there for too long. All right, let's go back to word document and we're going to go to number three. Let's go to file open. 
And we're going to go to book number three. Book number three, you guys, again, this series will not release until Black Friday. Will not list release to Black Friday, but you can pre-order today. Uh, introduction to Book in the Making. Um, it's going to talk about, and guys, I, I really guys want you to understand this. This is dealing with everyday living. So this is dealing with if you're married, how do you manage credit when you're married? If you're a newlywed, how do you manage credit if you're a newlywed? If you're divorced, if you're widowed, what do you do in these situations? Like, oh, my husband just died. What do I do with my credit? Like, I just got married. I just got a divorce. What do I do with my credit? Like, all of these things are life, right? I got teenagers and they need to learn about credit. How do I do it? And we teach some fun field ways on how to teach your kids about credit. I can't wait to talk about some of those. Um, like, I might even have another baby just so I can teach them credit this way. <laughs> right? So, uh, give your teens practice with credit. Women in credit. Like, there is women in credit, you guys. There is a major deal that we need to talk about with that. And how you need to get credit in your own name and keep credit in your name and things to that extent, right? We're talking about the military, the Soldiers and Sellers uh, Civil Release Act, according to 1940, terminating leases, home evictions when rental properties, maximum interest rates when it comes to military. If you're an entrepreneur, guys, you know that it's so hard to get along with an entrepreneur. We talk about how to get along with an entrepreneur because it's not just based on credit. It's based on so many other things, but entrepreneurs, guys, have wild, real hard ways of proving their income. Like we talk about and tell you guys how to do that as well. You know, seniors, if you're a senior and your credit is toe up, right? Not toe up, but how do you manage it as a senior, right? This is like everyday living stuff. Um, you know, credit cards that travel well. The truth about bankruptcy. What can you keep? What about a chapter seven or a chapter 13? Um, uh, judgment proof. What if you're a co-signer? Can I get out of it? No. <laughs> but I do give you some ideas on it. Some, you know, some, some strategies on how you may be relieved from it. Uh, another form of bankruptcy is consumer credit counseling. Y'all didn't know that consolidating all those bills with consumer credit counseling is the same as a bankruptcy. And we talk about that and why it is. Bankruptcy judges and tax liens. What about check systems? If you guys can't open a checking account at a bank, you're probably in Texas. If we talk about that, what about fraud and how credit fraud affects everybody and how to protect yourself and, and um, federal law and how to protect your identity and how do you monitor your credit? What about your social security number and how to prevent fraud and all those kind of stuff? So guys, all of this, you guys got three different books. You got book number one, volume number one, volume number two, and volume number three. You want to make sure that uh, you're absolutely... Um, Getting all three books today. And then, of course, we got the credit course. That's about eight hours worth of information of me teaching you all of the stuff that's actually in the book. Guys, you, I've been doing this. Like, this book was published in 2002. Let me show you. Why am I telling you that? Because I'm not one of these people that just, you know, read a book on credit and be like, oh, I think we're going to write a book on credit. No. I want a book that took a class on credit. It's like, no. I've been helping people do this since 95, I believe. Because the book was written in 90, 2002. This 192 page, 90, is it 92 or 98? Hold on. 190, wait, hold on. 92. 192 page workbook style. 192 pages. Workbook style. This ain't no picture book, right? This is a real book of nothing but content. We broke it down into non free books. I'm telling you, this, I'm a beast at. You guys want to get this book today. Guys, I'll be back tomorrow. We're going to be talking about credit scoring on tomorrow. Then we're going to be talking about a whole lot of other stuff, right? But we're going to, talk, so we're going to start talking about credit scoring and the difference between the credit scores. So you want to make sure you're here at 730 tomorrow. Uh, invite your friends. Invite your family. All them people that got toe-up credit, them credit crooks that you know about, bring them on. Say, hey, I'm going to take you to the credit doctor, you credit crook. I got to go, you guys. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow for Morning Manor where we're talking about Kingdom. Kingdom, y'all. We're talking about kingdom. And uh, we got some more scriptures we're going to be going through. Bring your word. Get your get your life started with us. We give you faith in the morning. We give you works in the afternoon because faith without works is dead. And we actually put them together and teach you how to do both. You don't want to miss this show. Guys, I love you. I'll see you on tomorrow. God bless you. And, um, and let's watch the polls and see who wins. I hope you voted. I'll see you tomorrow. Be blessed.